Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this video is going to focus around looking at the basics of using Excel VBA within one workbook to open another workbook, uh, enter some information and then close and save that other workbook. So it's going to be just going over the basics today so we're not going to go in too deep uh, but again, it's another one. Just wants to spend a bit of time going on to like just the basics of how this would work. Obviously, it will give you a, a great feature that you can obviously go off and start using this with um, other projects or scenarios that you have at the moment. Uh, but obviously, we'll build upon this in time so we actually sort of see the real benefits of opening a workbook and being able to extract data from that workbook. But today's video, we're literally just going to look at the basics of, like I say, opening another workbook, entering some information, and then just closing and saving that workbook. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we'll open up our Excel. Uh, so just open up on your Excel workbook here. Uh, we've got the VBA uh, developer pane opened here as well. So we've gone into a new module and I'm just going to just create a subroutine and we're going to call this uh, sub and we'll call it workbook open underscore close and just do some spaces like that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we obviously need to open our workbook and well even before that we need to know where the workbook is so on another screen here I'll just put on just so you can see I've opened up um, the Explorer and you can see I've got this demo workbook here and you can see there's the file path so I'll obviously be copying that out in a second and also if I just open up this workbook and it's probably going to open up on another screen yep yeah, here we go you can see that this workbook is currently empty so there's nothing in there uh, but this is what we'll be using for um, populating some information so I'll just close that for the time being and we'll move this Explorer pane over to the side there. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we're going to go workbooks. So let's just type this, workbooks. And when you hit full stop, you can see that we have a very number of options available to us. So again, some of these other ones we'll look at in time. But the option we want is open. And you could scroll down this to find open here. Or all we need to do is just type the word open and that will do exactly the same for us. And you see as soon as you hit space, it's put the capital O there so it's now it's reformatted and that value has been accepted. We're then going to enter or type file name followed by a colon equal sign and then within quotations this is where we now need to enter the actual the full path of that file so what I just need to do is if I go over and I find or copy this from the Explorer and paste that into there you can see this this is the actual file path for that document but we need to go one step further and like I say put the full path for our particular file so I just need to add on to the end of this another backslash and I just need to type the workbook name, which is going to be, or is demo underscore book. And also just put the file extension. So for us, it is XLSX. So again, you just need to make sure you have the correct file extension for the file that you're using. Do enter, just go into a new row. So we've now defined, okay, we want to open a workbook and this is the file name of that workbook. So the next part is to then define well, actually, is to now actually put some information into this workbook. So we're just going to again go workbooks, and we'll go open, and we're going to call this demo book because we're now referring to that actual workbook that we want. So dot xlsx quotations close brackets. So this first one is we're basically kind of defining and opening this workbook, and this part here we're now referring to that workbook that we've got open. So obviously once it's been open, we know they've got this workbooks that we can uh, utilize or work with. Once we've done that, we're then going to do dot sheets. So this bit will be fairly familiar with you when uh, you've seen our previous videos. So when we're obviously referring to a range, and actually let me just type this in first, and then that will probably become more applicable. Uh, two sheets one dot range and we're literally going to just go into a1 here and we go dot value equals excel so what i was then going to touch on is this part of the actual of the script here will seem very familiar to like say if you've seen our previous videos because when we're referring to another sheet or just we've been adding information into our sheets obviously we always have to refer to our sheet or the sheet name or sheet reference We'll then also enter the range, obviously where we want to do it, and then dot value to enter text. You'd have seen in previous videos that I'd always put in here like uh, the actual text, so we'd have gone sheet one. 
Um, so this would work fine for us, but what I'm just going to do, because when we're referencing another workbook, we don't always know what the sheet might be called, or alternatively, people might have renamed the sheet without us knowing. So therefore, in this example, I'm just going to be using the sheet index number. And all this is, is this is just the index number that's assigned to each sheet. So as you see at the moment, we've got one sheet in this workbook called Sheet 1. The index for this sheet would be 1. If we were to enter another sheet, again, regardless of what we called it, it would then be called or referred to as sheet number two. So that's another way that you can reference sheets. But like I say, this part of the script here should seem very familiar to you. And this part here is just sort of a, a last or a new add-on, should we say, because we're referring to a different workbook um, to the one we're currently working in. So this part here, we've now actually entered a value into that workbook. So what we now need to do is go on to another new line and we're going to just now save that workbook. So we just now have to do the same reference. So we're going to go workbooks, open brackets, uh, demo underscore book uh, dot xlsx, close quotations, dot save. So that is obviously really simple. If you wanted to save the file as something else, then obviously you could just select the save as a button and obviously allow you to save it as a different file name and separate from the one you're using. That's obviously a really good technique. Uh, again, we'll probably cover off in the future, but that just enables you to maybe use this uh, demo book as maybe a template. And then when you do save that workbook, you're saving it as obviously another file name, so you're never overriding the template. Just to give an example as why you might want to use that. And the last part, so once we've, we've added obviously our text, we've saved the workbook. So the last thing we need to do here is obviously close the workbook. So we go workbooks, do the demo underscore book. Obviously, you could have copied this uh, if that was easier and probably quicker. Dot close. And that is it. That's the entirety of the script that we need to perform this function. So I'm just going to do that so you can just see. Just obviously push the tab button there to move it in. So yeah, just to recap, obviously we've defined and given the reference for what where the file is. We then ask the, uh, the script to say, okay, well, with this book, we want you to set the in the sheet number one in range or cell A1, we want the value to be Excel. Uh, once you've done that, we then want to save the workbook, and lastly, we want to close the workbook. So with all that done, let's see if it works. So all I'm gonna do is click within our subroutine and hit F5, and you'll see, on the, well, it's on a separate screen for me, uh, so you won't have seen it, but you'll have seen the loading there, is you may see the screen, well, you'll see another workbook gradually or quick, very quickly open and then close. That's obviously as this action is being performed. If I'm then to go into our Excel uh, file, so let me find our demo book, and I'll show you, I'm not now entering this in, if it, if does, if it does open on another screen, no. So there you can see it's now been put into, an, it's now put the value of Excel into range A1 for us. So we can successfully say that that's now been updated. So let's just change that um, and go back into here. And let's say we don't want to just do cell A1. I'm just checking that file is closed, yep. Say we don't want to just do cell A1, we want to do this for maybe, um, I don't know, from A1 all the way through to A, or even let's go B, B1000. So you can see, again, it's going to do a lot of, um, it's going to do a lot of Excels basically in all this range. And it just goes to show you the power of doing this. Um, I can't see why there be an example why you want to put the word Excel or just one word into all of these cells. Uh, but in my head, I think this is probably a good number uh, scenario just to show you uh, the benefits and obviously the volume that this can do for you. So if we were to go run this again now, you can see it takes a bit longer there. If I now go into our file, open up demo book, and wait for it to open, yeah, and then pull this across, you can now see that the word Excel has been uh, obviously populated into all of those cells, all the way down to row 1000. So obviously that's been updated for us, and that gives you insight on how to open another workbook from uh, your existing workbook and then to populate it with some information. So as I did say, a bit of a simple example there, you can all obviously play around with this, uh, for argument's sake, let me say, let's go to the workbook, and let me say we want to now change this value to, um, I don't know, uh, Monday, random day of the week here. And let's say we want to quote out those two lines of code. What we can do is if we now run this, it will populate the file for you, but it won't save and close it. So this is another way you can play around to see what's happening with the code, uh, and it helps you to see what's going on, uh, like I say, as you run it. 
that's obviously what happens if you comment those two out. So if you comment these two out, the file will open and it will populate, but it won't actually uh, close and save it for you. Obviously, you just need to take those two off if you do want to revert back to that. So as I said at the beginning of the video, a very simple example we're going to cover off today to give you an insight into how to open another workbook and populate it with some information. As you can probably see, as we step down the line and go into more advanced examples, the benefits of this would be obviously being able to maintain multiple Excel sheets, uh, updating and extracting information from those sheets as required. So if you did enjoy that video and you learned something new, please do give the video a like, uh, greatly appreciated by myself and also does help that all important YouTube algorithm Algorithm. If it's your first time coming across the channel and watching one of our videos or you have watched our videos before and you've not yet subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, like I say again, I will be greatly appreciated and it does also help the channel to get promoted so that more people can see our content. And when you do subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all of our future videos. So lastly, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.